All right, hello, welcome. Are you serious? Episode number thirty-nine. Mm. How little, are we uh, still here? <laughs> yeah, a little, um, a little stew of weather in this episode. A little bit, a little bit of everything. Yeah, and uh, if there was probably an episode where we're going to get canceled, this could be the one. Just because I feel like we could rant about some of this stuff. Yeah, well, you know we're going to rant about something. Well, we always do. <laughs> Typically, way. it's you and not me. So, uh, I will say thank you to everyone who's been uh, viewing and listening. You can rate our podcast. That's apparently what we're supposed to tell you to yep. do. What I will say is we are now approaching 4,000 downloads That's of listeners amazing. only. Uh, listeners. Yeah, which still kind of amazes me. Yeah, right? I've, l- I've yet to listen to us. <laughs> Honestly, it annoys me more. Yeah, I get too distracted. If, I, I, if I'm watching us, like going back and watching, I'm good. But yep. if I just have to listen, I can't. If you listen or watch us every week, obviously on YouTube, just say, hey, I watch. Or if message Jamie and I and let us know if you listen. I would love to just know who's who. Yeah. I feel like some days the videos benefit a little bit better. Yeah. Other days you can listen to audio. But typically, I'll, I'll listen to the audio just to see, and it's always like the first 10 minutes for me where I could tell if an episode's going to be good or not. I know. And I'm know. like, oh. Yeah. yeah and then if it's 10 minutes, like, uh, oh. yeah. yawn. But yeah, we're here. It is the middle of February. Hopefully, everyone had a great Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, we have family in town, so we just kept it easy. And yeah, we've I've been doing nothing, really. It's been kind of nice. Same. I um. Most exciting thing in my life right now is uh, I've picked up painting again. I almost told you to bring the painting. Yeah, I didn't bring the painting. It's big. We'll get back to that story. Um, so I'm now working on my second painting. Okay. Um, started it earlier in the week when we had all that rain Monday. I worked the morning show for you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to pull out the old canvas and paint brushes again and mm-hmm. just see what I can come up with. I want to tell you something that you probably didn't know about me. Uh-oh. It's kind of like painting. I didn't know you painted it until yeah. you painted it. I used to write songs. Well, I and I would like country songs. Yeah. <laughs> Western playing. Um, they weren't that like, great. Yeah. But it, it was something about thinking about, okay, what direction I want to go. Yeah. Kind of the same way with probably you and painting yeah. just to escape. Yeah. When it comes to your inspiration behind that, where do you find that? Do you go out and look? Mm-hmm. Do you just think? Most of it is usually sort of just kind of in my head and it's what I know. So like the first painting I did was just kind of a Typical low country marsh mm. sunset kind of scene. It's what I know. It's and, what I know. And can you see that as you paint it? I always start with the sky when I paint. Okay. And then I kind of figure out what the landscape portion, the foreground is okay. going to be. I can only do landscapes. I can't paint portraits. I can't paint animals. We I, should, can't do, I can do landscapes. And that's should, it. We should get you to paint a portrait. We'll paint portraits of each <laughs> right, other. Yeah, let's do that. See how bad that is. So uh, here's what's cool. Okay. I got, after I posted it on Facebook, I got a couple of messages from people saying they wanted to buy my painting. Really? Yeah. Yeah, which was really flattering because I'm not an artist by any stretch. Mm-hmm. It's literally just my little hobby that I do after taking a couple years off just to kind of relieve stress. And it just, when you're just in that painting, there's nothing else. Yeah. You know, I hate to get all Bob Ross on you, but it's literally like you're creating your little world and that's all I'm focused on yeah. and whatever hardships in life or work or whatever. Happy on, little accidents. Yeah. Just disappear. But yeah, a couple people offered to buy my paintings. I'm not going to sell my paintings. I bought a painting from you. Remember that? I did. I painted one yeah, for Emily for, for Emily. Christmas yeah. a couple years ago. That was, I yeah. think that was the last painting I did. Okay. So here's wow, what that's I, a long time. Yeah, a long time. <laughs> so here's what I think I'm going to do. I can't set a price on my paintings because I don't know. Yeah. In one, it feels weird to do that. So what I'm going to do is, as people are interested in paintings, make me an offer. Whatever offer you're comfortable with. I don't care if it's 10 bucks. That's fine. And pick a charity. Oh, I like that. And we will make that donation to charity. I like that. Yeah. Because honestly, I don't like having all of those canvases in the house. Mm-hmm. As long as I have like a, a print, a copy of my painting, I'm fine. Okay. But all those canvases, they just start collecting dust in the, yeah. in the closet. So I'm okay with getting rid of them. So, and I'm also thinking maybe we could do something with a few paintings at the finale. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I don't have any yeah. skills for for the finale. You I could bring my guitar. Of, you could raffle off one of your songs. Hey. Or we, can, or we could just do a live performance. I think you grab the tambourine and 
that and I'll get the guitar. Every, I think everybody would rather just have a coffee mug and be done with it. <laughs> like, we don't want your crap. I was going to say, man, maybe you could raise enough money for us to buy some coffee right. mugs for the podcast. That is what you need to donate <laughs> yeah, to. That's the, the Are You Serious Mug charity. Yeah, the GoFundMe. Yeah, buy a painting. We'll donate it to Are You Serious Mugs. That's awesome. Ordered. How yeah. long do these paintings take? Sometimes I can crank one out in an hour oh, that's if I'm cool. like really into it. Yeah. Uh, the first one I did, it was you know I was off for a couple of days. I had three days off, and I would work like two hours at a time over three days, so about mm. six hours. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I looked at it and I was like, wow. I also have to say, did you see the one comment that you did get on your painting? What? Which Who commented? One? I did. Yeah, right. Josh Morgerman. Right. I girl crushed oh, so I, hard. <laughs> I was like oh my god josh i woke up to him i was like oh josh commented yeah. on jamie's post yeah, yeah famous josh morgerman i cyclone mm-hmm. hurricane chaser who i just absolutely idolize yeah. he he said whoa dude amazing yeah one day i don't know how to do it i know there's a way we need to have him on the podcast and i think he would do it in a heartbeat mm-hmm. But it's something like we have to put him in the screen and be yeah. able to hear him. And yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna have, we need to. We, we need, need to. We probably should get that locked down before hurricane season. Yeah, gets going. I think so too. Yeah, honestly, it would just be us geeking out. Yeah, hey, tell us about this storm. Yeah. Um, speaking of storms, so we're gonna just jump into it. Um, last week, there was some discussion. Last week, two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, uh, they, they may not even know what we're talking about. Yeah, weather Twitter. Yeah, kind of got kinda a blew buzz. Up. Yeah, kind of mm-hmm. blew up on weather Twitter for a while about potentially adding category six to the hurricane scale. And here's the beauty about weather Twitter: <laughs> when it blows up, it blows up. It does, and I can see both sides, but I'm a very traditionalist. Me too. It's been that way for years. Let's stick yeah. with it. So the big post was a it was a blog post by Dr. Jeff Masters, um, who was a very well respected meteorologist, very uh, well respected, incredibly brilliant. Um, and he was bringing up some previous hurricanes yeah. that reached incredible wind speeds. Yeah. Um, Hurricane Patricia was one of those uh, wind speeds that were just out of the world. Yeah, two fifteen, um, two fifteen, s- sustained think. winds, sustained winds. But now that was in the Pacific, correct? Okay. Which is a different yeah. breed. Of storms. Right. I think everyone would tell you that. But it brought up the question is, as storms continue to happen and we see stronger winds, Mm -hmm. should there be a new category added to our scale? Here's my answer. And I have probably the same answer as you. Here's my answer. No. Yeah. Um, Category five starts at 157 miles per hour and higher. Yes. We have had hurricanes make landfall in the u.s and especially out in the open waters of the atlantic that had winds higher than that Mm -hmm. 160 i think dorian at one point reached 180 before it went into the bahamas uh we had mitch uh back in the 90s down in the caribbean that i think was 180 185 somewhere along there the difference between 157 and 180 Everything's blown away and destroyed anyway. Mm-hmm. So why why complicate? Yeah, and I think people are so used to the current Saffir Simpson scale one through five. Yeah, at least for me, there's almost a guttural reaction when you hear a storm reaches category five. Yeah, every time. That's the holy grail of, mm-hmm. of hurricanes. Is uh, it's a category five? Yeah. If we get a category six. Are we going to lose that? Are there going to be people who are like, oh, it's just a Category 5. Yeah. It's not the worst hurricane. <sighs> well, this this brings up my exact point. I'm glad you're on the same side with this. This is where the weather world mm-hmm. loses its purpose, I feel like. Our purpose is to keep people safe, right? Mm-hmm. The impacts, if we're going back to our season one episode of trusting the cone Mm -hmm. and focusing on the cone and the forecast, it is all impact-based. Yeah. The meteorology community as a whole, I feel like, is so fixated on numbers and Mm -hmm. data that adding a category does nothing. No. Nothing to the public. No. In fact, I think it confuses them more. Yeah. Think about severe weather. Like, we've had a high-risk level five 
two days in advance, even a day in advance. Mm-hmm. And we're not throwing about an extreme, like we're not throwing yeah. in a new risk there. Yeah. Um, so I don't think so. And like you said, the end result is not. Right. If, if you're hit with a Category 5 hurricane, it is utter destruction. Mm-hmm. It's going to well, be that way regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, yeah, it just, it complicates matters. Not only to mention too, could you imagine retraining the public? Right. right. To know that. Mm-hmm. Because ideally my thought is if you add in a six, you're then going to have to figure out a threshold where a five stops. Where does a five stop? Right. And then well, do you go back and look at previous fives and then right. class the, it's just, it's right. a mess. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Let's so. leave well enough alone. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Fives are respected and feared as they should be. Yeah. So let's leave them that way. I'm glad you say respected and feared because this whole episode is kind of breaking down like the psychology of weather. Yeah. I think category six is a great tipping point into that. Maybe that should be the title of this one. Ooh, category six. Category six. That'll get people's attention. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. Yeah. This is how we think of our titles. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> While we're doing the episode. Um but it got me thinking, and we've, we've talked about this already this season and last season, too. We wanted a whole episode based on just the viewer's perception of weather. Mm-hmm. And, man, I uh, did a school talk recently. School talk. I did a school talk and a talk. I went over there to uh, the Mount Vernon Senior Center. Mm-hmm. And I opened it and said, oh, we're going to do things a little different today. Mm-hmm. Tell me where you get your weather. Yeah. That was my first question. Mm-hmm. Weather app, national news, mm-hmm. local news, mm-hmm. in that order mm-hmm. was the top answers. Okay, cool. What a weather app? Mm-hmm. The iPhone weather app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. If there's ever a place where I think there's some perception that goes wrong, mm-hmm. I think the pre installed weather app is a good starting spot it's kind of the root of all evil yeah and i think that's where everything (laughs) kind of starts yeah um for instance for people that don't know you get a pre-installed weather app on your android or Mm -hmm. your iphone 90 percent of the time those are forecasts for larger cities Mm -hmm. kind of interpolated data in between Mm -hmm. and just spits out a number zero human input whatsoever zero human input it is Whatever, and it's typically, in most cases, GFS. Yeah. Which, as we know, is eh, yeah. not always the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is literally the raw output and that's from it. the GFS. That means it's going to change every six hours mm-hmm. as new, as because that's how often the GFS is To going. make you think you're getting every an updated forecast. The GFS swings wildly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> especially in winter. <laughs> and especially in the winter. Uh, I had a big post on Facebook about this last week. Yeah, last week. Mm-hmm. There was... There was one run there, the GFS, that cranked out about four inches of snow in Myrtle Beach about six days out. Mm-hmm. And if you had, looked at the weather had, app. Had you looked at the iPhone app at just the right time during that sort of six-hour window, you probably would have seen a forecast for Myrtle Beach that said snow. Yeah. It was sunny and in the 50s. <laughs> that was the reality of the forecast. And I think this opens up a really good window of opportunity. Where, where this is going to dive off quick. Um I think this is the root of the problem is I think people associate us with that app. Mm -hmm. And I think they often think that if that app is wrong, we're wrong. Mm -hmm. We are not affiliated with the iPhone app. We are not affiliated with the Android app. We have one app. It is our first solar weather app that we input data. Yes. It is updated many times throughout the day to fit our forecast. Yeah. And I know it probably sounds like a broken record every time we promote it. Especially when a big event is coming. Yeah. But it is the best app for it. Yeah. And I don't I don't I don't want this to turn into like sounding like we're selling the app. No, the app. At we're all. Not, we're not selling it. One, it's free. But let's talk about our daily duties. Yes. Pretty high on my to do list, pretty early in my to do list every day when I get in is go into our little system that we have and make sure the app looks good. It matches make sure your forecast. It matches the forecast. Mm-hmm. Make sure the numbers are where they need to be. Yep. And I do that a couple times a day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there's human input. 
Let's go ahead and just pull up this app. Speaking and just curious, why you do that? I'm gonna I'm gonna stir stir the pot a little bit, I guess. <laughs> That, Uh-oh. that certain cable company that focuses only on weather. Oh, okay. That app is the exact same as the iPhone app. Yeah. It's it's raw data spit I, out. Just to show you how much I don't trust it, I've deleted it from my phone. I do too. I don't even have so it. So I don't anymore. have yeah. it. I don't yeah. think I have it on my work one. So a lot of your a lot of your national bigger outlet apps are going to have that. Oh, I do have it on my where personal. it's where it's just it's just raw data. Um, there's no way that a company based in Atlanta, <laughs> the Weather Channel, can keep up with the actual numbers Mm-mm. for every location in the country, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They can't do it. Yeah. High of 65. Today? Yeah. Mm. Just so you know, we forecasted yeah. 60. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sunday highs in the 40s. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, we forecast it low to mid-50s. So it's just little things like that. Yeah. 50% chance of rain on Saturday. Well, there's 50%, so you know how we feel about 50%. <laughs> so that right there is enough. To, it's, it's garbage. But what's crazy is there's going to be no and, – and a good thing that I think that we do here, and I think if you follow us, you probably get it. When you change a forecast, you just mm-hmm. don't flip the script completely. Yeah. That app does. Yeah. Um, I'll tweak the number like 40% to 30%. Yeah. Or forty percent to sixty percent, mm-hmm. like you build yeah. with each run rather yeah. than oh, okay, it's going to yeah. snow. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. Another thing is just I was talking to Emily's dad. He's an avid listener of our podcast, and they brought this up too in the um, in the talk when I went to the senior center. There's an argument now that weather just didn't happen like it did. 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it did. It did. We live in a world now to where we want everything at the palm of our hand. Instantly, yeah. That you're hearing about it yeah. quicker than you ever have. Yeah. Think about the national news. Like, yeah. they lead with whatever the weather, because yeah. weather's the number one driver. Yeah. Yep. So when you're saying, hey, I feel like we didn't have this many tornadoes. Well, we did. We but did. You probably don't remember because it wasn't everywhere. It wasn't in the everywhere in your face, blown up. I totally agree. Everything. I mean, everything. it's changed. It's honestly kind of changed our job for the worst. I have I have no desire to go any higher in my career. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not going to network. I'm not going to be working on the Today Show, so I can say this: the national media is the absolute worst. Okay. The absolute worst, because you. You you turn on any night this week. They had you know the nor'easter up in New York and New England, and it's leading in bomb cyclone and nor'easter. I'm sorry to say the word. It snowed eight inches in Boston and New York City in mm-hmm. February. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Polar vortex. <laughs> Polar vortex. Atmospheric river. Yeah. Pineapple Express. You've heard it all. <laughs> Come on. It's a lot. Yeah, and it feels like. It, like you said, it feels like there is a lot more weather and a lot worse weather. It's weather. It doesn't sell. It's been happening since the beginning of time. You're not gonna. <laughs> you're not gonna start with a, a live shot out in, you know, Houston, saying, "Hey, yeah. it's sunny and eighty out sunny there." Sunny and eighty, yeah, yeah. Nobody because cares. it's not yeah. what people want. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's the big thing in this business, and for us when we do have an event that is going to impact us, mm-hmm. this is where we run into some issues. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's the messaging from where people are getting their information and they come to us and thinking that we're all connected or what. Um, but we go back to what was that? December came. Mm-hmm. Let's go to that mm-hmm. in January. Mm-hmm. Even if weather didn't happen, or we didn't say certain things that they think we said. Mm-hmm. We still get accused for it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. If things get in the psyche, they you hear them, you scroll past it on Facebook or Twitter, and it, it gets wrapped up and involved in whatever weather situation we're talking about mm-hmm. or dealing with. <laughs> I feel like for us to kind of give an example of this, we need to – Show some examples. Yeah. 
Tell me about this idea you did, and then we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll start reading this because I love this. Yeah. So we've often talked about, you know, the comments that we get, the bad ones, or the ones that you know make us chuckle a lot. So it's like, you know what? Let's put a positive spin on this. Yeah. Because look, if you're going to come after me on my Facebook page, <laughs> on my Facebook page with an ugly comment or a stupid comment, I've got a couple of options. Yeah. Well, don't worry. We can read them all. If it's really ignorant, I'm just going to delete you. If it's a little tongue in cheek, I'm going to I'm going to clap back. Yeah. I'm going to clap back. And I save all the good comments. See, I need to start doing this oh, because yeah. I've I've just let them yeah. let them go. Um, so I thought, you know what? Let's turn these horrible things that people <laughs> say to us into inspirational quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with one of yours first. Yeah, this is actually I got this one uh, really recently last week. Um <laughs> And there was a moment on the air where myself and Eric Weisfeld were just wrapping up, having a little conversation after my forecast. And we had a little tongue-in-cheek kind of laughter, whatever. 30 seconds later, a message pops up on our main WBF page. Your 530 weatherman is sort of a bleep. <laughs> Did you respond to that? No, I didn't respond to that one. I got a fun one. This was on a summer day. I remember it vividly. Um, we had storms inland. Sea yeah. breeze kind of kept everything in inside. Um, I think we might have had one shower in Surfside. But I remember like some big time storms in Florence. Mm-hmm. But this viewer said, so much for a 40% chance of rain. I'm sitting under sunshine and having a beer. Do better, Andrew. Which was fun. Yeah. And I responded and said, yeah. hey, just so you know, here's radar. Yeah. You're in the 60. Yeah, you're in the 60. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the perception of it. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, this one I got. Saving the best ones for last year. Yeah. This one I actually this one actually goes back to the December came. Mm, okay. Um, honestly, you're boring with your weather predictions. There is no big storm. You simply like to get all these old people and transplants from New Jersey upset about fake weather. This one's not as much weather-related, but just to show you. What sometimes we have to deal with. Yeah. That suit makes you look fat. (laughs) (laughs) I can't laugh at it. Uh, Why don't you figure out how to lose some weight and dress first before predicting the weather? It might do you some good. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's from Anonymous, by the way. I don't know why I've gotten really lucky, which you're like a tiny guy. The fact that somebody called you fat is ridiculous. I'm not. I'm a big dude. All right? I'm a big. Well, maybe they've seen that you'll clap back. I'm a big dude. That was a private message. I have gotten very few messages in my now 21 years about my personal appearance. Hmm. Very few. Yeah, I I haven't gotten any. But in person? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think they think they're giving me a compliment. Yeah, they'll do that to me, too. Yeah. You look fat on TV. I thought you were fatter. <laughs> like when I see them in public, they'll come up. I thought you were really fat. I mean, I'm not exactly thin, but uh, thank you. Yeah, you look thank so you. much taller on TV. Is yeah, what you I look get. So, yeah, yeah, you look a lot taller. <laughs> well, thanks. You look a lot. Yeah, you look a lot fatter on TV. Yeah. And then finally, I threw in one that was, I think this was a tropical system. You and I were both working. Mm -hmm. Um, All you do is cry wolf. You and Jamie Arnold both. Give me a break. There's not going to be any tornadoes. There never are. There never are. And where do we, (laughs) where do we even get that perception that like, this is what baffles me. People will complain if there's not a tornado. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't understand oh, yeah. where that comes from. Yeah, I don't either. I, I do not get it. And I don't know if they're just so passionate about the weather that they want to see something happen. Right. Or if, if they hear us on the air saying, there's a tornado watch, conditions are favorable, we may get an isolated tornado, which is what we've said a million times. Mm-hmm. Do they hear everyone's going to get a tornado? <laughs> I don't know, and I, I don't know if that's a messaging thing for us. Yeah. I don't know if it's maybe they're following bad accounts. That, or maybe they're just dumb <laughs> and ignorant. It, it, and that's a legit concern. Well, because yeah, com- I get what you're saying. There comes a point where we get comments that are so ridiculous mm-hmm. 
that you can't respond. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> Tornadoes never happens with hurricanes here. Yeah. Should we pull some stats for you, buddy? <laughs> I could think of like <laughs> plenty. I'm usually too busy yeah. to worry about responses yeah. like that. Yeah. But if I have time and if it's not a huge weather thing, I will. I will. All right. Well, let's look. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, Dorian, we were, yeah. what, eight hours? Oh, yeah. Tornado, yeah, tornado warnings for eight hours straight. Before yeah. it even yeah. moved through. Yeah. In Florence, we had um, eight simultaneous tornado warnings in effect at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's what could be a factor. Maybe. This is me thinking. This is not me saying this. Maybe when they think tornado, they think Yeah. when our tornadoes here are not that at all. Right. Like, yeah. occasionally, yes. Yeah. Or if it doesn't lead the other news. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that's going to be. Um, that's just a couple of things. Obviously, I am a little worried with the future of the business, mm -hmm. where things mm -hmm. are going to go. Um, if you go to YouTube and just type in weather, mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll get all these big clickbaity yeah. images, major yeah. winter storm, and it'll make yeah. it look like you're going to get snow. Yeah. Um, so please be careful on who you follow. Mitch is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We brought him on. Um, but there are some people out there that are on the side of caution. Yeah. Anything else you yeah. want to say? I'm going to try I mean, that. there's so much that we could just keep going on and on about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in, in the, at the end of the day, the vast majority of people that comment or say things are wonderful. Yes, and, I was going to say. And, and, you know, not a problem at all. And maybe, one, maybe they're just dumb to maybe they're just keyboard warriors you know mm -hmm. your personality changes when you can be anonymous behind a keyboard yeah maybe some of the same you've people. had a bad day you want to tell somebody off who better than the weather guy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let him have it and he feels better about himself uh, fine whatever we life also, goes on we also i'm not this. losing any sleep over any of your comments no uh, honestly i think they're funny yeah uh, they they make me chuckle yeah um i think there's this uh stigma too with us mm -hmm. you know growing up in the in back in the day, yeah, sixties, seventies, eighties, yeah. like never trust the weatherman. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's like if you heard that from your grandma, or grandpa, mm -hmm. you're going to continue that mm -hmm. that story. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maybe there's like a stigma to that there. Yeah. Um, the the which is crazy because the accuracy right now in weather is phenomenal. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, and of course there are mm. still going to be instances where. Mother Nature pulls a fast one and things kind of go awry, but also forecasts change. Mm -hmm. They evolve. Mm -hmm. They switch around. A perfect example, I know, you know, locals watching this probably aren't following, but uh, the snowstorm mm -hmm. in New York and Boston earlier this week featured, well, at least on weather Twitter, mm -hmm. has, has blown up because of what a dramatic change happened with that storm in about two days' time. Yeah. That storm was supposed to be Syracuse, Binghamton, New York, a foot of snow, New York City, Philadelphia was supposed to be rain. Mm. And two days leading up to the storm, everything shifted south in the core of that snow right through the heart of New York City up to Boston. So forecasts evolve. Yeah. Forecasts change. I'm never one to give credit. Well, to give credit. I will give credit here. Um, for the first time ever, big snow station, mm -hmm. WKYT in Lexington. Huge snow station. Like, loves snow. That mm -hmm. whole market mm -hmm. eats, sleeps, breathes snow. For the first time I can ever remember, because the models were changing mm -hmm. so much, they didn't put any accumulation map out. Mm -hmm. They just said, chance for accumulating snow, and they did greatest chance. Mm-hmm. Moderate chance, mm -hmm. slight chance, and that's they just tweak those because the inconsistencies were crazy. Yeah, honestly, I think we need more of that in yeah. this in this day and age. Yeah, and I'm seeing a lot more, and this has happened in the past couple of years. Now we're going on a snow forecasting team. Yeah, that's I fine. love it. I love do. it. This is great. I'm seeing a lot more boom or bust yeah. forecast. Yeah, me too. So here's our forecast. Yeah, let's say just I don't know for this. Two to four inches. Yeah. That's the forecast. Mm -hmm. That is the forecast. There's a boom potential to that. Yeah. Temperatures are colder. Uh, maybe we get more moisture. Yeah. We go four to six. Okay. Bust. Yeah. Temperatures 34 instead of 32. Yeah. Moisture stays south of us. 
we may get a dusting. Mm. There's there's always that range. Correct. We can't go on the air and say a dusting to eight inches <laughs> because no, we'd get ran out of town. Because yeah, yeah, right. Because what is what good is that? So we have to make a forecast. We are forecasters. Mm-hmm. We are going to make a forecast, but every forecast has that certain amount mm-hmm. of wiggle room. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I think explaining that <clears throat> and sort of graphically showing that in a very clean and simple kind of way is, is something, you know, I, I keep thinking about that in my head if, if it ever decides to snow here again, yeah. how we're going to handle that. Yeah, I think that's good. Also, like, the more transparency you can yeah. have, yeah. I think the better meteorologist you're going to be. Yeah. Like, yeah. I am personally tired of, of the, the know-it-alls. Yeah. You come on, this is it, mm-hmm. I, me, mm-hmm. I... Mm -hmm. This is my thought. All that Mm -hmm. just drives me nuts. I would much rather you say, hey, here's the latest. Mm -hmm. Here's how we've tweaked our numbers. A, Mm -hmm. you say we, which I love. Mm -hmm. It's a team. But then, and you're transparent with every hit as data comes in. And we've tried to do a really good job Mm -hmm. with that. It's not easy. Um, It is so, so easy to get concerned with what the forecast is going to be. And stick with that, mm-hmm. but I think you need to tweak it, and I think you need I've, to be transparent with the viewers that way. I've gotten a lot better with that over the years. I used to hate to change a forecast. Yeah, I would hate. Yeah, same. To change a forecast now, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Especially if you explain it. Mm-hmm. Like, look, this is what happened. Mm-hmm. We're 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 we got to bump that rain chance up. Yeah, this is what this is this is why we're bump the rain chance up. And you just keep going. It's yeah. okay. Transparency, I yeah, think, is going to okay. be our, our greatest it's asset okay. as we go into yep. the future, especially with um, clickbait yeah. and social media and everything in between. Um, I don't know how long we've been going, but we got some time for some questions. I love it. Um, we still got like 45 in here. I know. So, I'm sure. And I haven't thrown any more in yet because I knew we had still 45 in here. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Thank you all. And yeah. you can always ask more questions. Remember to rate that podcast as well. Ooh, this is good. D.L. Morgan on Twitter. Always very active on Twitter and, yeah. and some really good insights. Um, how is development in the area affecting our local microclimate? Ooh. That's really good. Um, development in urban areas obviously does have a huge issue on the microclimate. Um most famously, you've probably heard this, the urban heat island effect. Mm-hmm. Hot urban, Lana. Yeah, yeah, Hot Lana. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the urban heat island effect. So, um, you know, as cities grow and you get more pavement and buildings and asphalt and shingles and rooftops and all of that, on a sunny day, that, that absorbs all of that warmth. And, and because there's so much of it, uh, cities tend to be, hotter during the day and warmer at night Mm -hmm. Um, especially at night urban Mm -hmm. heat island effect really shows up at night Um, locally a bit yeah a bit Myrtle Beach NYR Mm -hmm. tends to run a little bit warmer than anywhere else yeah Um, locally I think our biggest microclimate issue and it's not so much a microclimate issue as it is a ecosystem issue uh, is with so much development, um, the flash flooding mm-hmm. that we get potentially. Um, we're in an area that's naturally marsh, mm-hmm. um, and we're we're paving over in it over it, um, and we're basically shutting off all the access points where water used to go. Yeah, yeah. The marshes and the swamps that we have here um, are just sort of natural catch basins mm-hmm. for water. Yeah. Um, the ones that are left great they're still doing that job but as we continue to development develop and pave things over every time we get a big rain it's filling those spots up a lot more um and we're running out of places for water to go now there's a big debate on what we should do with development in Myrtle Mm -hmm. Beach I'll get out of that but there's no denying that you you know you take a field you take a marsh you fill it up you level it you put asphalt on top of it you're going to have a whole lot of water that's running somewhere yeah, and a lot of people talking about, um, like, I would say companies are doing it okay with, like, if you build a big neighborhood, let's throw four or five retention ponds in, but mm-hmm. that's only going to do so much. Ask anybody who lives in a neighborhood <laughs> in Myrtle Beach that has retention ponds yeah. 
and we get a 10 inch rainfall. It's over. Um, especially in those summer storms or a hurricane, you get six, seven, 10 inches of rain in a short amount of time. Those retention ponds fill up like that. Yeah. And then they overflow and they flood. Retention ponds obviously aren't the answer here. We're, and we live in an area that makes it even more difficult, I think. One, because we are seeing so much development. Two, we are prone to excessive rainfall. Yeah. You know, it, it, we can get summer storms that drop 10 inches of rain in two hours. Mm. We can get hurricanes that drop 25 inches of rain in two days. There's a certain point where there's nothing you can do about that. No, there's at nothing. All. There's nothing. I've I've had some intense discussions with some people. Uh, well, we used to never, you know, uh, the flooding, and we got to change things, and we got to dredge the rivers. Well, when you reach a certain amount, there's only so much you can mm-hmm. do. You know, if you get 30 inches of rain like we did with Hurricane Florence, I don't care how great your drainage system is, how great your river systems and your dams are, you're gonna flood, plain and simple. Yeah. So. I think we swung around and answered that one. <laughs> we'll stop before I add on, and then yeah, we get on another yeah, I'll get on an, another get in tangent. Again. Um, if you hear our newsroom, it's a very yeah. active newsroom this morning. So we're, uh, <laughs> I say this morning, yeah. this evening, whatever. Oh, George, I think this is George Pitt. When and how does the El Nino pattern change? Well, um, it's going to change. Soon. Soon. Um, already looks like it's in the process of changing. El yeah. Nino is, um, you know, it was all the rage for fall going into this winter. Um, it looks like pretty soon going into spring, El Nino fades, and we may see a quick switch back to La Nina. Mm-hmm. Trade winds drive that. Trade winds. Completely. Yep. Um, strong trade winds, no trade winds. Basically, and show you exactly everything you need to know. We have upwelling of warmer waters. Yep. Um, that is the main focal point. It's the same thing with the ocean circulations out yeah. in the Atlantic, yeah. except we focus on an area in the Pacific, um, and that's where the forecast changes come from. What's really cool and fascinating to me is we can predict that so far in Very advance. far in advance, yeah. And it's accurate yeah, to an extent. Like, yeah. hey, there's a percentage... La Nina is going to be this strong. Like, yeah. That's cool to me. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to dive into that, but we would bore you to death. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you can tell it's it's a big global pattern, yeah. and it's not just – it's driven by a lot of other factors that we can sort of see and predict. And the bottom line is El Nino is fading. La Nina is likely making a comeback uh, for hurricane season, and I think probably pretty soon we'll be doing a whole episode on hurricane season. I think so, too. I'm worried. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about yeah, the hurricane. Me season. too. And then I think we need to do a whole episode in just severe weather season. Yeah. Um, I would love to bring on the National Weather Service for severe weather season. Yeah, that'd be fun. I think even just talking about yeah. damage, going out on the damage survey. Yeah. How do you determine what straight line winds? How yeah. do you determine what's tornado damage? Um, and plus, they're great over there. Oh, I think so that would great, be. Yeah. And then we'll really geek out with hurricane yeah. stuff. Um, you'll go ahead and grab one. Thank you, George. By the way, for yeah, that question. Good stuff. Um, if you're just now tuning in or you're still with us, so this is Shooting the Breeze. We answer your questions you submit to us. Um, this is anonymous, oh. uh, but one of my favorite precipitation types ever in the world, hail. What causes hail to develop and sometimes very quickly without warning? Hail fascinates me. I love to see hail. Me too. And there's uh, some times where I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. Thinking yeah. about what goes on in a cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go quick through this. Okay. Because... It, it, <laughs> the process of how hail forms can get can get quite intense. Mm-hmm. So basically, you have a thunderstorm developing. A uh, thunderstorm is composed of updrafts, so air is rising, going up. Um, you get a raindrop that starts to form. Mm-hmm. Tiny, minuscule little raindrop. Yeah. Um, well, as that updraft is going, it's keeping that raindrop suspended. Um, Updraft is strong enough, it sends it high enough into the atmosphere where it freezes. Mm -hmm. It freezes. Um, And it'll kind of stay suspended up there a little bit. It starts to fall. And as it falls, it sort of gathers more moisture. Mm -hmm. It gets caught in the updraft again, goes back up, freezes, Mm -hmm. and it repeats that process over and over and over again. And each time it goes up, it gets bigger. We basically add another layer of moisture gets thrown above freezing, 
until it finally becomes heavy enough that the updraft in the thunderstorm can't hold it up anymore and it has to fall out. That's how you get a hailstorm. And that falls, and without a doubt, you get those different sizes at the temperature too. You can't, yeah. yeah. Or at the well, surface from yeah. it falling with its temperature. Yeah. Um, you can cut a hailstone in half. Mm. And Which I love to see those photos. love to do. Um, and you can count the rings and see how many trips that it took through that thunderstorm, which is just an amazing thing to do. Keep in mind, too, when we're talking like pea-sized hail, eh, well, yeah, don't look. Yeah, yeah. It, we're talking like softball, yeah, baseball yeah. size. You'd be able to see that. If uh, you've never seen that, pull that up. It's yeah, cool. And just for the – just kind of get an idea of how intense thunderstorms can be, uh, to get a golf ball-sized hailstone, you need a 100-mile-per-hour updraft in a thunderstorm. That means air is rising at 100 miles per hour. And that's where you see the big yeah. towering yeah. Cumulon- oh, yeah. cumulonimbus clouds. Yeah. It's my favorite type of weather. We could sit here. Um, can you give examples of what you consider extreme weather conditions, not just Category 5 hurricanes or an EF5 tornado? What about heavy fog or a hailstorm? Um, absolutely fog. For me in the morning, man, fog can really be a terrible way. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite Matt Stanley stories mm-hmm. is when he called me into his office and said, did we hit fog hard enough? <laughs> Fog can be just as bad as a hurricane, Andrew. And I was like, okay, oh, let's pump. settle down, Matt let's Stanley. Pump, let's pump the brake here, Matt. <laughs> oh, I was so irate. I still remember that to this day. But impact-wise, when you're driving in the fog, yes, it can be impactful to a hurricane. Eh. Um, but things like that, uh, we're now into this thing, and you do this really well, too. We try to, even if it's one, like a morning commute or evening mm-hmm. commute, highlight it red. Yeah. Like, hey, it's going to be a nasty yeah. morning commute. Yeah. Really trying to focus more on impacts rather than just severity. Yeah. Um, has been kind of what we focused on. I'm trying to think what else. Really hot day. Really hot brutally days. Brutally hot. Yeah. What else? Yeah. For me, um, a couple of things that stick out in my mind outside of what you would normally associate with severe weather, or extreme weather. Um, things that I'm going to hit hard over the course of a year. Heat index 110 or higher. Yep. For us to get 105. Yeah, it happens. June, it's July, a, August. It happens. You day. get 110. That's extreme. I'm not, you're going to see me pumping that up yeah. hard. Uh, 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Yeah, which we um, had this week. That seems to be the threshold that gets people's attention. Yes. That's when it's blowing hard enough where people are like, whoa. Mm-hmm. whoa. 30 to 40 people don't really bat an eye. Yeah. I've noticed that yeah. here. Yeah. Hey, well, we, we live in a windy place. Yeah. So it's got a crank for people to really notice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 50 seems to be kind of that threshold where people are like, man, it is ripping. Yeah. Uh, so I'll pump up wind because wind gets a lot of people's attention and wind can kind of scare people, even if it's windy and it's clear. Yeah. Um, earlier in the week, I got a bunch of posts, uh, comments on a post. I did, yeah, it was shaking the house. Yeah, the, the furniture was blowing around. And 50-mile-per-hour mm-hmm. winds will do that. So I'll hit that. Uh, cold, anything under 20 Yeah. for me, okay. 20 or lower, is is I'm going to hit real hard for, you know, yeah. really cold extreme weather here. Especially uh, widespread 20 or yeah, lower. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get in teens for sure. Um about it yeah i was trying to think yeah. wind and fog are kind of yeah. the two things for me yeah. and then in the summer yeah. trying to get used to that yep other than that yeah you won't see us do any storm red unless we think there's a severe weather threat mm-hmm. um or it's just a nasty mm-hmm. washout yeah day i think earlier this week yeah, monday like, we, like, like monday, monday was just it was just it was just poured and gross yeah, and disgusting. horrible and slowed you down i took a day off thinking you know yeah. when, when you take it off four weeks right, in yeah. advance you're like oh, okay the yeah. weather will be great nope but yeah that's what i would say uh mm-hmm. we got time for a couple more do a few more yeah All do right. two more uh, well at least we're cranking through them this time right um when the models aren't great what else do you rely on when it comes to a forecast uh that's <laughs> pt H Helm 68 on YouTube. Um, i tell you what we rely on. Us. Yeah. Our, our forecasting knowledge. And I always say this, and I think this is something we definitely need to get better on. Um, you know, the models are a tool. Mm-hmm. The, a tool in the toolbox of forecasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not the be-all, end-all. We don't get on air and just present the model i think that's mm-hmm. something a lot of meteorologists need to work on mm-hmm. self-included yeah um i'm trying to do better myself of if i do show like if we have a big rain event or something coming i will say okay well this is 
this is kind of what the GFS model is saying. Mm -hmm. This is what the European model is saying. You can see there's some big differences there. Let me show you our forecast. Mm, that's good. To try to, you know. Kind of that best and worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you use your gut. You use experience. Yeah. You know, 17 years here now, you, after a certain amount of time, you, you quickly recognize certain patterns mm -hmm. and situations that can sometimes overproduce rain or wind or whatever, or underproduce. Um, you know, you quickly learn that models tend to way overdo a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be a beautiful model run or a crazy model run for wind and rain or, or whatever. And you know, eh, okay, well, you know, this model always overdoes, way it. overdoes or yeah. way underdoes or whatever. And you just, you're, you just sort of constantly, rattle that around in your head as you're mm -hmm. making a forecast here's the beauty in that too and i would say this to anyone who's in the business still getting started i mean i still try to really like be a sponge when it comes to every system that rolls through mm -hmm. you're not going to get better at severe weather forecasting or even forecasting in general mm -hmm. if you're only focusing on the big events mm -hmm. like next low pressure that walks through mm -hmm look at the tendencies yeah like where's that low going yeah what's the weather we get how does that change um and then you'll really get a good pattern for what to expect based mm -hmm. off just where things are yeah um i texted you saturday or something mm -hmm. hey system eh, if i was chasing i'd be down here yeah still not impressed like yeah. you just it, your gut feels you, more yeah. confident yeah and you and you what's <laughs> What's fun to me is when you can forecast what the models are going to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, I expect a shift to the south. Yeah, in, in we're going we're gonna to see day. this. Yeah, or we're a shift to the north. Or we're going to see this happen. Yeah. Just experience and knowing get ahead of it. the weather pattern. Yeah, you can – yeah, when you can forecast the models. Yeah, you've got to you're, go you're coming. You're coming quite a long way along. I've thought about – because I'm, I'm glad you brought up the whole model thing. I've thought about – and I've gotten into it on Future Radar now. I used to do Future Radar Dash Euro – Future Radar Dash GFS. Mm -hmm. I just do Future Radar. Yeah, and I just say, hey, here's where I am confident in. Yep. This is what's matching my thought. Mm -hmm. And I thought about with GFS and Euro, just taking the names out before and saying best mm -hmm. and worst case mm -hmm. scenario. Mm -hmm. Like, here's our higher end. Here's our lower end. Mm -hmm. Here's where we think. So I don't know. Maybe that's something to look into down yeah. the road. But yeah, I, I really think you've nailed it. I, I don't think, obviously, like the day before usually is a good indicator if it's a severe weather setup. Yep. What did it do the day before? Yes. Because um, that should tell you what you're going to see for the next. Yeah. But anything yeah. else to add to that? I don't think so. <laughs> uh -oh. When does a snowstorm become a blizzard? Ah, there is a technical definition for blizzard. Um, it's not just, oh, man, it's snowing hard. Yeah. Um, three consecutive hours. Yep three consecutive hours back to back three hours back to back visibility one quarter of a mile or less mm -hmm. so the intensity of snow is measured in visibility yeah uh in the meteorological community so if you're uh it's not just huge flakes it's not just big flakes mm -hmm. oh man it's snowing real hard whatever yeah that's fun to say but there is a technical definition so if you're about two mile visibility down to about a mile and a quarter that's called, that's technically light snow. Mm. Mile and a quarter and up, light snow. You get moderate snow uh, when your visibility is a mile down to half mile? I think it's half mile. And then half mile and lower, you're into heavy snow. Yeah. Um, so, blizzard. One quarter mile visibility. Yep. That can either be falling snow mm -hmm. or blowing snow. Mm -hmm. You can have blizzard conditions and the sun is shining. Yeah. But if it's blowing very hard and blowing snow enough to reduce visibility to a quarter mile, that's blizzard conditions. Um, and three consecutive hours of wind gusts over 35 miles per hour. Which is tough sometimes to get in a winter system. Which is tough to get. So three consecutive hours of wind gusts over 35 and visibility a quarter mile or less. Check. And that is a technical definition of a blizzard. I love that. I love that you knew how to rattle that. I knew it was visibility and wind. Yeah. Let's get that know. here. Let's get that here. And it has nothing to do with temperature. Not at all. No temperature is not included in the definition of blizzard. Yeah, you can have you can have blizzard like additions when it's yeah. thirty. Which yeah. is kinda cool. Yeah. So Yeah. Um, that was fun. Episode forty is next week. That's uh our first oh not first. 
guest. Yeah, well, yeah, our yeah. first guest of season yeah, three. Yeah, first guest of the season of season three, yeah. Um, I think we could do a little tease. Yeah. I really thought that was him at first. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> we are Briggy Gun. I don't know his title anymore. Chief photographer. Chief photographer, do it all. Pump up positive spirit. Comedian extraordinaire. Comedian extraordinaire. Yeah. Uh, George Hansen George is coming Hansen. on. George Hansen My is My goodness. I always say, when I'm telling people, like, oh, what's it like to work in TV or whatever, I always say it's it's almost like a sitcom or a movie because to work in this environment, you have to be a bit of a character. Mm-hmm. you got to be a little off your rocker. Mm-hmm. you got to be a little crazy. Mm-hmm. And everybody that works in this building and every TV station in the country – yeah. A little crazy and kind of like a sitcom character. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. No one matches that description more than George Hansen. In the loveliest way possible. In the best way possible. The most lovable person you will ever meet in your life. One of the hardest workers I've ever met. Fun fact about George. Um, myself, George, and one other person, Katrina, uh, over on the business side. Uh, we're the only three originals left from the startup of WBF News. We're kind of a dying breed. Um, but yeah, George and I started together and I can't wait to have him on. I can't either. And we had to do the intro now because George will talk so much that we're we gonna, won't be able to. <laughs> we're going to sit back like this and laugh when he's so starts. bad. Big, yeah. He's amazing. He may take the mic and not let us speak yeah. at all. And he I could fully sing. mean that. He may play the ukulele. He may preach. We may go to Bible study all while he's here. Yeah. You yeah. don't know. You never know. You don't George. know. And he was asking, what should I bring? I said, just bring yourself. George. Just, yeah, bring yourself. You'll be set. So yeah. he's going to be next week. Let me tell you, it might be one of the best episodes. Yeah. It could go <laughs> off the rails completely. Yeah. So that's going to be next week. And someone asked, when are we going to end season three? We have no idea. We don't know. We don't even know what we're doing in two weeks. I'm looking ahead, and I'm just thinking maybe late June. Okay. I think we take a little break. Okay. I, because there's a, there's so much happening in May and June yeah. that I think we're going to want to talk about it on the podcast. Same. Um, I also am <laughs> I'm a little worried about hurricane season and yeah, the podcast. Yeah, worried, worried about hurricane season. So, you know, so we'll, we'll, we'll tell you see. why. We've kind of hinted at why we're worried about hurricane season. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll dedicate and as we get whole closer, my that. worry yeah. will be maybe a little yeah. higher, maybe a little yeah. lower. So. We'll get that figured out. But, yeah, so next week, George. Live podcast for the finale. A live podcast three. for the finale. For the finale, absolutely. I don't know. Maybe we'll do another Hurricane Week thing, well, like last year. We don't even know yeah. what we're doing in June yeah. yet. Yeah. Anya and them are in the back, yeah. like, what are we oh, doing? No. We've got enough going on in June. <laughs> yeah, uh, that does it for us for thirty nine. Yeah. Make sure you rate it, like it, tell a friend, send in those comments, and um, yeah, we'll do it again next week. Yeah. Can't wait. Thanks, Thanks y'all. y'all.